Hey, creative people and budding creatives. I am here with Breege, Breege Walsh, who's in the group with us. Several of us have been going through the artist way. We haven't been able to coordinate, being able to meet to discuss the chapters. Breege and I are actually doing that and we wanted to share it with you and anybody who can jump in or join in or tell us your experiences of the chapters and the exercises at the end. I would love, we would love to hear from you. So we're jumping in right with chapter three. We're going right to the end and we're just having a short discussion about some of the exercises in the chapters and some we will have done and some we might not have done, but here we go. Are you ready? We're ready to rock and roll. <laughs> awesome. All right. So go ahead. Go ahead. I know you've got a favorite in chapter three. Oh, so my favorite ahead. is chapter three. Yes. Yeah. You're right. so pick that one and let's just start going through it back and forth. Yeah, because um, it's actually part of the detective work, the exercise before we even get to the exercises at the back. I mean, this, this book has a lot of exercises and I'll be honest and say, I don't do them all. <laughs> I, pick no, I don't either. Some of them feel like they don't apply. Some of them I just yeah. can't think of. Yeah. Oh, know. and by the way, I'm, and I should say it's actually week three is how it's aligned in the book. Yes, yeah. it is. Okay. Not so chapter what, three. Yeah. Yeah. What is that so, exercise that you loved? I really like this one that, that's, that started with, it went on with my favorite child, childhood toy was, and you thought of your favorite and my favorite childhood game was I just really enjoyed going back and thinking of those things I love to do and what were the other things my best movie my favorite musical instrument it actually made me think I hadn't really had a favorite musical instrument until I thought about it and uh, that so also made me a bit emotional thinking of some of them ah. and what I bring forward to this week now is since since doing this I think it's kind of given me a permission to do some of the things that I really like to do as a child. Awesome. Because when I was out walking on Sunday, I just really walked through the leaves and kicked them and listened to the noise. And that's something I loved to do when I was a child. <laughs> so, that was... Oh my gosh, leaves, puddles, right? All of the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that sound too, of the crunching leaves. So I love what you're saying is, one, it it gets us thinking and gets ideas flowing about like, what did I really like as a child? Because chances are there's still a piece of that that appeals to us now, right? And then second, giving yourself permission to be playful, to do some of those things, to not have to have it be reasonable or logical. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So what did, what did you do or what did you like out of this well, chapter? Well, I was going to say, let's just go back and forth, like bam, bam, bam. Like, okay. So what, what was your favorite childhood toy? Oh, you want to, oh, my favorite childhood toy was this cot pink cot with a baby in it or a, well not a baby a doll <laughs> that was my favorite one that came up when I was doing it what was yours what did you love about it just curious uh I've been thinking about it a bit since and I I think I don't know it was the motherly instinct part of it and it was pink and I know nowadays pink you know everything is pink for girls but I don't remember much things being pink in those days so I think it was the color and it was like a real baby as well. The doll was like a real baby. So awesome. uh, yeah, that was part. That, that was my, that's what I came to mind. When I, I put did. down, um, I'm trying to read my writing. I had a favorite stuffed animal that was a panda. And then um, I put down that I liked creating Barbie houses. I just wrote that somewhere in the group too. Um, I liked coming up with them on my own though and making them myself rather okay. than having somebody buy it and give it to me. Your creativity um, was, was well started, Laura. It was there. <laughs> it was there from the beginning. I think we all had those things when we were little. We just forget about them. What was your, and it'll take forever if we go through everything, but just curious, like, what are some of your favorite ones here? Like, what was, did you have a favorite childhood game? Yeah, for sure. And that was an outdoor game um, that was called Rounders, which for people who aren't from Ireland, um, it's very like your baseball, only not as structured. So. Okay. Throw a ball. What I liked about it was thought that the neighbors, the kids from the neighborhood would come in and we had a yard and we'd all play in it. So I think that's what I liked about it more than the the actual game itself was fun, but it was the fact that we were all playing together. Yeah, it was really fun. And you'd love the days when, when everyone would come up when it would be a fine day and everyone would do it. Don't know how much my mother loved it, but we loved it. 
I bet she did love it, seeing all the kids there at her own place. I love how much your eyes are lighting up as you talk about this, right? Yeah, as we're really thinking cool. about all the kids coming over and you guys just playing this game yeah. and being creative yeah. in the moment with it. And, you know, I'm sure there was fights with it as well, but it was fun. It was a fun thing. And you'd be picking teams and all that sort of stuff. I didn't have a favorite. Oh. I didn't have a favorite game, but I do remember that I loved playing board games, even if I was bad at them. Didn't matter, yeah. even if it was a one that I lost every time. I just loved playing them, and so I think, and I think I heard this in yours too. I think I just really loved the interaction, you know, That's just it. yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. just curious, and like I said, like so, maybe pick a couple of your favorite ones. Um, well, did you have a favorite movie? Because I sure did. I can't remember that. What was your favorite movie? <laughs> oh my gosh. So I'm older, right? So this is when we couldn't watch any movie that we wanted to watch anytime we wanted to watch it. I had to wait once a year for this movie to come on television and we would get a TV guide. I am so showing my age. We would get a TV guide in the mail. And when you'd see, oh my God, it's coming up this week. My favorite movie of all time was Wizard of Oz. Oh, and I would just, I mean, part of what I love when th you couldn't watch things whenever you wanted was the anticipation of it. Cause cool. I would be excited all week long that the Wizard of Oz was coming on. Like I would be looking forward to it. And then once it started, I was in a zone. You couldn't talk to me. If you said my name, I wouldn't hear you. I was sat in front of the TV and I was zoned into it. And I was I, like, there was, there was just like, you could go like this. I wouldn't even see you. I was so into the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> that's that's Did you amazing. Have I don't think I watched the Wizard of Oz as a child, but my children loved the Wizard of Oz. And I, I recorded it in one of those old VHS videos ah. and they watched it over and over and How over. funny so then i got to love it because i said <laughs> so times, so that's hilarious yeah. yeah um you mentioned the instrument so what about that one yeah well that was when i did that was the violin i just love it and even since i yeah since i really thought about it i've been more more um conscious about listening to um listening to more violin music and, and that's Lindsay where I told you about Lindsay yeah. Sterling, who yes. I love. I also love the violin. When I was a kid, I probably liked the guitar more. Yeah. And I did teach, I went, I got some lessons and then those ended. And then I just sort of taught myself then as I got older. But my uh, inspiration for that was my aunt who used to play a lot on the guitar. Mm, yeah. yeah, but I love the violin too. So yeah. um, any of those other questions that you love? I don't know if there was something else that... um. Huh. I'm, trying, I'm trying to go away secretly. I'm trying to think of um, the amount of money I spend on treating myself to entertainment each month was a bit of a shocker because it wasn't very much. And it's not that I'm stingy about it. It's just I didn't think about it. I mean, taking if you minus off the subscriptions to TV and stuff like that, which really is more my husband's thing than mine. Um, I don't think I actually spent anything on entertainment, but I, I, I suppose. Yeah, I need to, I feel like it's something I would like to do more of. Awesome. Yeah, because I, I would have, when I lived in the city, I would have gone to the theater more and go to more concerts. But now it's much more of an effort to do that. But it's an effort worth making. And I, I feel like it's definitely something I could improve on. <laughs> could improve. Well, I think that's great. It's just like a bubbling up, like, oh, okay. So now you're aware of, oh, well, yeah. now I might look for these opportunities and I get to spend some money on them because... Yes. Right, because it inspires me and, and, and instigates my creativity. Um, That's a good thing to do. And even your artist dates that you've been doing, I think, are not spending yeah. a lot of money, right? Like, oh, not a lot of money, but they're just very enjoyable. So it's not, yeah. I, I don't pick out the artist date by the amount of money, either way, one way or the other. I just, I suppose at the moment, I'm just picking it out as something I can fit in as well, you know. Yes. Um, yeah. I got you there, definitely. So... Just to make this short, so I'm going to jump on unless there's another one of those questions that you love. No, I think I'm good with those. I think that's really all that I did. And I'm thinking. Now, I, have oh. been, I, I will say I've been very consistent with the artist page or the morning pages. And I honestly think they are just such a great way of getting stuff off your chest. Apart from anything else. They're, but they're, I do find that my intuition has improved by just doing them, which doesn't really make much sense. But. But definitely. Maybe it's because I allow stuff to come out. You know, we allow it to come out. And yeah. 
Yeah. Do you have any, a great example of that that you wanted to share? Or? Well, what was the one? Well, I remember that now. What was it? Yeah, when I just asked a simple question, it was actually to do with this book as well. I was asking myself the question of why, because somebody had shared that they kind of had stopped doing the artist pages, the morning pages, even though they knew that it was helpful. And I, it was a question I asked myself, why do people do this, including myself? We are really know something is good for us. We're enjoying it. And then we suddenly stop. And I remember when I was doing the page, you know, when I stopped doing my morning pages, I just had this kind of flash, go read chapter four. So I read a bit of chapter four. And of course, she explained that. That she noticed that people stop or neglect the pages. When she says an unpleasant clarity is about to come up, but I don't even think it has to be unpleasant. I think it just be, can be anything that's going to bring change or that's going to bring that into our awareness. And I thought it was such I was so fascinated that I got the answer straight away. <laughs> but I find that with the morning pages, I'm putting a lot of questions into my morning pages, not purposely, it's just what's coming out. So therefore I'm getting the answer and they're coming back in different ways. So, Oh that's my, my gosh, you just said so many different things that I love. Um, the fact that when you're asking questions and then you're alert and, and, you, and noticing that you notice the answers come to you, right? Mm -hmm. Like maybe in the morning pages or maybe later. The, the answer that you got there, I love. Um, and I love how you said it's not just, it's not necessarily like when that resistance comes up, like resistance is depending on what system you're looking at, it's a form of a gremlin or a nerd or a, a saboteur or all of those things. So when they come up, it could be something unpleasant that you're avoiding, or it could be something great could be. that we're avoiding to keep us where we are because those parts of us want to maintain the status quo right yeah that's exactly it's change that doesn't necessarily isn't necessarily going to be unpleasant but because our brain loves familiar it kind of it so, takes over i think that's what happens but anyway that was that was my I, such I, good noticing such good noticing and i'll just um and then we can get back to that really quick but i um and then i'll just share my experience with that so i noticed this morning myself having to get myself to do my morning pages and for me, what happens is I start getting into doing mode, you know, like, so like I do the um, artist, I do the morning pages most when I notice there's, I do them easily when I know that there's a need, like I want clarification or I was confused about something or something like that. And then once I get some answers, I start getting into doing mode, doing, doing, doing. And then I get to remind myself that if I keep up and when I keep up the morning pages, that it keeps all that stuff flowing and it keeps fresh ideas coming into me because then I can just get off onto the doing mode. And yes. yeah. So anyways, that's something else that happens. So one thing I liked on here, I'm looking over these exercises at the end of week three. So how about this? What comes to you as far as five childhood accomplishments? <laughs> Like it could be anything. It could be like tiny, tiny, like, oh, I learned to use the potty. I mean, it could be anything, right? Actually, what really comes to me when you say that was learning to ride a bike, um, a bicycle, a two-wheeled. And um, I just remembered so vividly because my dad had taken an old bike. I don't know where he got it. And he brought it to the bicycle shop and made it for a child's bike. But it wasn't really, like it was smaller than an adult's but it wasn't when I look back it wasn't really a child's bike but anyway it took me so long how to ride this bike <laughs> it really did and I, I when I think while I'm looking back about the accomplishments is my gratitude for these neighbors children I was talking about earlier earlier on that we used to play rounders they used to come and hold the bike you know all that patience thing but anyway that's one accomplishment learning how to ride the bike when it wasn't easy <laughs> But what a, oh my gosh, like what a great learning and a great feeling to bring up and remember. It reminds me of that reel that I did on Instagram the other day based on our conversations where yeah. basically like, so that's such a great example to remember. If we keep trying, as long as it's something we want, we eventually get there. Success is inevitable, right? So yeah. as a, you know, we don't just quit learning to walk and we don't just quit usually like learning to do something we want to do, like ride a bike. So yeah. Well, I well, I just think of any other ones. What do you come up with, Laura, when you think of five? I'm 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 glancing at my notes, what I wrote when I did oh, went through this, this chapter. Yeah. And um I'm trying to read it. Hang on. <laughs> um 
One was, you know, those Barbie houses that I talked about earlier. Yes. It felt like a, an accomplishment. Like I would have a friend come and like spend the night. We would spend all night making Barbie houses. One time I remember we got in trouble. My mom thought like we were on drugs or something because we stayed up all night and we were tired. Like, and we were acting, <laughs> acting funny. But, and then we would like play Barbies for 10 minutes. Mm. But we mm. would spend like three hours making a Barbie house, right? But <laughs> But after it was done, that felt like an accomplishment. Well, um, that was an accomplishment. Trying to think childhood accomplishments. Yeah, and then I had little ones like maybe learning to skate or, um, yeah, um, like most of the tasks. But mm. I'm sure um, there's lots. I mean, lots of childhood accomplishments. Can you think about it? I just have. I haven't written this down, Lucy. So I'm I'm, I'm trying to think up the top of my head. <laughs> I do remember run, running a, a really long race as well at, at school. We used to have the school races. It was a very small school. And I think it was a mile. And a mile when you're small is quite a lot. And I remember my accomplishment was to finish it. <laughs> so it wasn't that I got anything for it. It was to finish it. So that That's huge. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. So they're, they're the things I can remember. But sure, of course, I had loads of accomplishments. Everything. We learned how to read. We learned how to write. You know, all those sorts of different things that's all I, love, to I love this exercise for a couple reasons like one um as we think about these things it brings back all of those good feelings which is great like law of attraction wise and reminds us to have persistence and just keep going with whatever it is because when, yes. when we were kids we did that if we really wanted to do it we kept with it oh, and yeah. Then I also just love that it's making all those ideas flow around. Like, you know, yeah. and thinking, oh, I really did like that when I was a kid. Maybe I'll do that again. Like one thing that comes up in these exercises when I think about bikes, I don't remember which exercise it was. Like when it asks about um, like totally outrageous things that you'd love to do, or there's one about if you had um, like five extra lives and you just pick something that's outrageous or, or ridiculous. And I put like a BMX rider. <laughs> like an extreme dirt biker like <laughs> um, but it's just so fun to think about those things right and and yeah. there's a little course um in a park in Chicago not far from here that has this tiny little like dirt bike course so that's something I could do is I could just go in that little dirt bike course and get some of that back so that's true yeah yeah um anything else you wanted to touch on with some of these exercises we're doing most of the childhood ones there's also some on here toward the end about thinking about people you admire and thinking about people who you secretly admire and then as opposed to think people you think you should admire did yeah. anything come up for you around those see I, I haven't really looked at these laura <laughs> so this is, these are one of the ones that i haven't come up with anything for there's five people you admire, five people you secretly admire. Who do I secretly admire? That's, I think, the great question. Let's just go with that. That's, yeah. the, that's the good, that's the nugget there. <laughs> Who do I secretly admire? That wouldn't necessarily be um, somebody. So I suppose a lot of people I admire wouldn't be who you'd call famous people. There would be kind of people who just do ordinary things, but just, like there's one lady I know that she um I know her since my childhood. And I, I do secretly admire her because she she'd be very um she'd be very loving. She was very loving to us as children and and, and she didn't have children at the time and she was a very good friend of my mother's. But then she was also a very good artist, like it, she'd do art and oh she'd make things and all of that. So she's definitely someone I don't know if secretly admire, but I definitely would admire her for her. Yeah, because she does lots of different things and her creativity and also her, I suppose, her willingness to be creative, you know, that sort of thing. She tried different things. Yeah. Awesome. I love that. I had put, so when I think about people that I admire, I often kind of go back to those people who were huge influences for me, like authors and speakers who I loved and kind of influenced me. So, you know, you just because Bridge, you know me. So, you know, like Dr. Wayne Dyer is like, my huge like lifetime hero, but Marion Williamson, um, uh, back in the, in the day, some of those spiritual writers, Shakti Gawain was big, uh, in like, I was like college age. Like, so some of those people come to me at first and then like people, and again, it's not really so secret, 
But other people that came to me, well, when we were talking, because we came up, because we came up with Lindsay Sterling. So then that came up like, like, wow, I look at her and her videos and I just think, oh my gosh, so she has this skill, this art of playing the violin that takes huge practice and, and, um, uh, discipline to get mm -hmm. to. And then her total creativity comes out with it. Like I totally admire that because then of her videos are just amazing and they're so creative. Um, yeah. Dolly Parton came up as somebody like I were, I admire just because, um, I mean, everybody loves Dolly Parton these yeah. days. Right. But like, just cause she has such a good heart and she follows it and she puts it out there. And she also is just not afraid to be totally herself. I mean, yes, she has a brand, but she she's not afraid to be her brand do you know what yeah. i'm saying and she uh -huh. was that before she had a brand you know like i feel like she was herself before branding came into it well, i'm sure it was always branding but you know yeah. yeah nobody called it that back then but i feel like she did that right like yeah, yeah. but um i can't read my writing on on the other ones that i put down <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I think what I learned about that from myself is I always admired these writers and speakers who were into personal development and spiritual development and that I know. But I think the interesting part for me is when I ask myself further, like, who do I secretly admire? I come up with like artists, right? Yes. Whether it's Lady Gaga or Lindsay Sterling or Dolly Parton. They don't have to all be musical, by the way, that those are just the ones that I came <laughs> up with. <laughs> yeah. So interesting. So here, so Breach and I did this today, are doing this today because we were doing it anyway. Mm -hmm. um, I invite everybody in this group, if you are interested in joining us for doing this live, um, put something down in the comments or just put live or I want to do live or reach out in a DM or whatever you want to do. And we would love to have more people going through the Artist Way book with us. Or if you don't have time for that, that's cool. And you want to though do uh, share, I would love, we would love to see um, some of your responses in the chat. So anything to the end of week three, put it in here. Like what were some of your, what are some of your secret people you admire? What were the things that you loved when you were a child? I would love to see those because those inspire me and give me ideas. Same as you, Breach. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it's great to share. It also keeps you motivated to keep doing the things. I think when you hear the feedback from other people, it's, it's a good way. I'll stay motivated. But as you say, Laura, you don't have to be doing these to, to get through, you know, to do the book and get the value from it. Yeah. So um, I just really appreciate you, Breach, for doing this with me and having the conversation with me and, and putting all your shares in. And um, yeah, it keeps me going and I know it's keeping other people going. So thank you so much. Bye, you guys. Love you. Bye.